All right, hey everybody, I am trying this again. Last time I tried it, I just didn't like how it was turning out. So we're gonna go back over the um, content that I started earlier. As you can see now, I'm in my garage. If you can see behind me here a little bit, those are my favorite work boots for ground um, work. They are the Timberland Pro with composite toe work boots where are they at right there um about 200 bucks i guess they last a little over a season they work really well i like them a lot this is my favorite lanyard i'm going to um start using that here soon there's some pros and cons about it but we'll talk about that in another episode we are going to talk today though about the recoil foot loop so i'm not sure if this is for sale yet in stores in the u.s however you can get it in the u.s you just have to buy it on recoil.com dan told me that he is you know offering it in the states just you have to buy it through recoil.com so um this strap here is made with the you know the traditional quality that recoil puts into everything and it is i mean super stellar so um i have climbed on a couple of foot loops uh by two or three different brands one was kiss love which is more of a wreck climbing company didn't last very long was not worth the money so don't buy those on amazon for tree climbing the bark and stuff is just way too aggressive and the way we have to move in tree climbing, not worth it at all. This, definitely worth it. Um, I also climbed on a Stein foot loop, and I found that it didn't quite fit my foot the way that I had expected it to. It wasn't a bad product. It just wasn't as good as it could have been, and definitely not as good as Recoil. Uh, so the Recoil foot loop comes in two sizes, size one and size two. This is a size two. I wear a size 12, 13, depending on the brand. This is a size uh, 12 UK. So it's a 13 US and these fit really well. These are pros do and this locks in. In fact, it locks so well, I never take it off. Like when I'm on the ground walking around and stuff, I forget that it's even there. It never rolls around, never causes any issues. Even in the tree, I find that very infrequently does it move. It stays pretty well locked in orientation like it should. So, um, the I mean, I wear this all over the place, and I've done ground cleanup, whole days of ground cleanup and everything in this thing already, and you can tell it's, like, not even worn. So, and I've been using this thing now for three months. That's pretty, pretty impressive. And the material up top, this is not soft. It's like really durable and I, I don't know if it's Cordura or what, but it's uh, definitely a, a high quality and it's stiff and it, it really is just better made than the others that I've seen so far. So if you're looking for a foot loop, the little bit of extra shipping you'll pay, which isn't much from Australia, Plus, the, I want to say these are $29 or $25 or something like that. Totally worth it. Support Dan. He's trying really hard to make quality stuff for us tree guys. And he's doing a good job. Plus, it just looks rad. The black and orange plus their, you know, their rubberized logos that he puts on everything. Super, super stellar. I like it a lot. So, um, yeah, definitely something to to consider if you're looking for a foot loop okay so um let's talk why i'm about to go to ddrt from srt so if you know me and if you've watched my videos at all you'll know that i pretty much climb 90 percent of the time srt removals trimming doesn't matter and i love climbing srt however if you haven't listened to the Elevated Office podcast that I uploaded with uh, Zigzag Man or Zach Richards, you haven't heard his take on why he is MRS or DDRT or whatever it's called, this 
this day um, for removals. But I like his point. So what he was saying is that he doesn't feel super comfortable climbing SRT with the foot ascenders and the knee ascenders with spikes on. Why? Not because there's not devices out there for that. There are. You can buy your brackets that clamp your ascender onto your shank and, you know, you can, you can climb on your hooks with a, an ascender mounted to it and it's not too uncomfortable. But the way your legs move, and since they're not, like, fixed, they kind of sway, the, spur, the spurs or spikes, because they're slightly angled out, can gaff you. And I have gaffed my pant legs more than once, and I have gaffed my boots. In fact, if you look at these R Pros, which is what I spur climb in, you can see they are all gaffed up on the sides. Um, and it's because, I mean, these are the insides. They're scraped, and that's because my spurs, when I'm ascending, rope walking, they, they spike. So I asked Zach, why do you prefer double rope or moving rope system or DDRT or whatever? And he said specifically because it has the pulley in it and it has the leverage so he can spike. And as he's spiking, he can pull the rope and pull himself up without having to use ascenders. And it makes him feel more comfortable because now he doesn't have potentials of spurring and spiking and gaffing his calves or shin or, or foot. And listening to him, you know, every time I've ever spurred and spiked on a moving rope system, which I've done, that's how I learned how to climb to begin with. An old school climber thought, um, didn't know that things had changed and he taught me how to climb with gaffs only on everything, right? So I had to learn that you're not supposed to gaff live trees and all that stuff. Um, and because of that, like it's really easy to move yourself up while you're climbing with gaffs if you have a moving rope system, right? So am I gonna go to moving rope system for absolutely everything? No, I will not. That's just not even worth it. I don't care about that. But for removals, it makes a lot of sense. Plus, Zach was telling me that like on spars, he likes it because once you've gotten everything moved out of the tree, what you can do is you can set a cinch, so a choker, and he's using a thimble saver from Tufelberg, or Tuf Tufelberger, what, however you say that company's name. And um, he is repelling down whatever distance he's going, let's say 5, 10, 15 feet, and then he is retrieving it and then he's cutting and flopping that stem, that stick. And then he set, you know, he has it set. He repels down. He retrieves it, flops it. And then you're not doing that crazy uncomfortable, you know, trying to use your flip line to, to get down. Which, it, it's amazing how much less comfortable for me and how much less secure I feel climbing down a spar on a flip line on spikes versus climbing up, right? Because you're, it's weird. Fighting gravity is easier going up than coming down for sure. And then trees, you know, where you've cut knobs and stuff off aren't always even and it's hard to see and it's hard to tell if you're gaffing into good wood or if you're just spurring um, bark and it, it might shell out on you, whatever. So I like the idea, truly of getting back into double rope or moving rope systems for removals. Now, I will say that there's a good chance I'll still do most of my canopy removal via SRT. Um, we'll just have to see. Because what I do that makes it a little bit different is, I know a lot of guys hate having like stuff hanging off their saddles, and I don't wear a lot on my saddle, but I do use two long lanyards. Both my lanyards are close to 20 foot long. And so I use them as short double rope systems and I can move around the canopy pretty well off of my SRT line. And in fact, sometimes I will disconnect an SRT line, hang it on a branch. And since I'm running two moving rope systems, you know, that are these lanyards, I can work and be secure and move and 
just come back if it's too far out or whatever. So it's just my style of climbing. Um, is it the most efficient? <coughs> Sorry. For me it is. I found it to be the most comfortable, the easiest, and, and I just move around much better that way. So it, it's up to each person, right? Like what's most efficient for me and what's most efficient for you may not be the same thing. Guys that have been DDRTing their whole life, a zigzag and a long rope, they'll, they'll move all over the canopy and they can manage both legs of line somehow easily and doesn't bother them. For me, it, it becomes cumbersome. I, I prefer just that one tail right below me, knowing where it's at and not having to worry about where my tie-in is with the, the um, pulley and then having to set a redirect that works with the pulley. It, it's more complicated in that system. But I do like the idea of not having to use a cinders with spikes because it does make me uncomfortable as well and Zach had a really good point with that. Um, so that's why I'm moving over to that system. Um, it still allows me to use awesome equipment like the recoil foot loop which I love and um, I'm adjusting my setup a little bit here and there. I've started climbing on the Akimbo recently. Um, it has its pros and cons. We'll go over that in another video. But um, I'm also adjusting my system. I've started climbing with a lot of top anchors for SRT versus just basal anchors. And that's very dependent on the trees that I'm climbing, um, what they need, what's best for them, and what makes them uh, most safe in, in those cases. But I'm looking at a lot of re retrievable stuff and how to make that more efficient. And there's a lot of information about that out online. But each person has what works better for them. So that's what I'm doing. Now, if you wanna look up a couple of retrievable systems that are really cool for um, spar work, SRT and DDRT, there are a couple of really good videos that I found recently. Um, Julian underscore, I wanna say JJ7, I think it is, has on Instagram, has a recent post about repelling down off of a, a choker that you can retrieve so he can repel SRT, retrieve it, use it, and go on. Um, Zigzag Man or Zach Richards, zigzagman.zr has a really good couple of videos from about nine months ago, year ago, that are also very similar and very handy, but he has a new post recently that shows him using his tree motion with a unique flare. So he takes the tail of his rope, redirects it, he puts it through the um, the waist uh, the waist ring, so like your side rings for your uh, lanyard, not the leg rings, but the ones on the, the saddle on the side. He puts a bite through there and connects a carabiner to his bridge knot and it becomes basically a repelling system, a micro repelling system. And he uses it for additional leverage out on an angle to get out, um, which was a really ingenious idea. Um, he's got a lot of cool stuff. You should really go check him out for that, for sure. So definitely those are two really good um, things to think about, uh, or two people to go check out. They have good content frequently and they they have really good ideas. I, I implement a lot of their ideas. So I really promote you going and checking them out. Um, I did forget to mention at the beginning of this video, uh, which I should, that this video once again is sponsored by Gap Arborist Supply. Zach Richards and myself are both ambassadors for Gap Arborist Supply. Um, they're in Gap, Pennsylvania. You can shop through gaparboristsupply.com. Tree Climber, I think or tree climb, I don't remember which, but if you go to their website, you'll see a code. I, think, I wanna say it's tree climb is a 10% off code. It's every order is free shipping and there is free two day shipping on orders over a hundred dollars. So go, go give them the support. They know their stuff, really, really know their stuff and they are worth supporting as a small business and uh, 
arborist in the industry as well. So definitely um, go check that out. Now, here in Colorado, we are currently by the governor's orders under stay at home orders, like most people it seems now. Um, thing is, as arborist, we are considered an essential business in most states, even under stay at home orders. However, there's a nuance to this. So if you go to the TCIA or the um, ISA, then you will find that they have put a joint letter together to the government uh, authorities saying that we are essential business and they give all the reasons why. And then they classify essential work versus non-essential work. So um, look at that, look it over, be, be proactive in making good decisions to be part of the, the help the community needs and not adding to the hindrance just because of finances. And I know it's complicated for everybody. It's complicated for me too, trying to figure out how to get stuff done. But thankfully enough, I have a really um, reliable and supportive client who has a lot of property that is dealing with beetle kill as well as um, uh, fire mitigating work. And that is considered essential business in our area. And it's because insurance companies require fire mitigating for the houses to be covered. And they're also, the beetle kill is an issue because in May, the beetles start to fly in there an invasive species of insect. And they are asking that that be required or be part of the essential work trying to, um, protect the forest here in Colorado, of course. So um, I'm going to go talk to him today. Looks like I've got some work for him, which makes it a little easier. But still, I had a really good beginning of this year, and then it just went like it did for a lot of people. So hopefully that will get better. Now, don't forget to look up some of the um, plans that are available for small businesses, for the loans and things. Um, there are some very specific stipulations. I, I have seen more info on that through Alignable. I don't know if you're on Alignable. If you're on Alignable uh, as a networking platform, then there's some information on that. Uh, LinkedIn usually does a pretty good job of giving information about that kind of stuff, so you might wanna check that out as well. And um, don't, yeah, don't try to oversweat it. I mean, I know it's easy to say and not easy to do, that's just, I just had to keep telling myself there's a way out. It's just temporary. And if I uh, am extremely sick or if somebody else is extremely sick, it makes it harder for me to make a living for my family anyway. So I, I'm just balancing the, the realities versus the potentials. So don't know if that helps you guys out or not. I hope so. I hope everybody's able to keep their families safe and healthy and keep themselves safe and healthy, whether it be from this craziness going on or whether it be just in the work that we do. So um, don't forget to check out gaparborsupply.com. You can get recoil products through them. But if you want the recoil foot loop, you'll have to go to recoil.com. Uh, I really recommend doing it. Dan's a great guy. The products are just really, really good. So go check them out as well. And as I get availability to get outside, I was going to shoot a climbing video today, but with some techniques, but as I get availability, I'll shoot some videos and I will show you guys what I am doing. So, um, thanks for stopping by. Hope you liked the video. I'll try to keep more stuff coming for you. And don't forget to check out Elevated Office Podcast. That is um, at anchor.fm or through any of your podcast hosts, you can uh, download, just do a search for Elevated Office and it'll come up. <coughs> Once again, thanks for everything, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.